today we will see the idea of the remainder theorem that the remainder theorem says if you divide a polynomial let's call it fx by a linear factor which we can call it x minus a then the remainder is the same as just evaluating the function at a so what this means is that you have two ways to find the remainder one of them by doing the division and look at the end end result and the other one is just to evaluate the function at a where your denominator has to be in the form x minus a so let's look at some examples now it says divide the following and find the remainder so let's first perform the division um, let's do our long division okay and denominator goes outside numerator goes inside so now let's perform our long division here x times what x times what gives you x cubed that will be x squared so now we perform a multiplication x times x squared is x cubed negative 2 times x squared that's negative 2 x squared and you gotta remember that when we multiply or when we do long division you gotta change the signs so we change the signs here so now we evaluate cancel out so presently cancels out as well so what do we have left we have negative 4 once you have this number this is your remainder the number that you that you leave alone at the end of a division this is your remainder now you can perform the division and you will have a remainder now there's also if we want to use the remainder term The remainder theorem says, well, if you're dividing and your denominator has the expression x minus some number, then we can just substitute it. Now, here in our case, we have x minus 2. So that means that this 2, this is our a in the remainder theorem. So what we can do is we can get the numerator and we can evaluate it at 2. So let's do that. So f of a, which we know that a is equal to 2. So f of 2 is equal to 2 to the third minus 2, 2 to the second minus 4. Let's make some space here. So let's see. 2 to the third, that's 8. 2 to the second, that's 4. 4 times 2, that's 8, minus 4. Notice that the a's will cancel out, and you get negative 4. And notice that our result, it's the same remainder that we had here. So now you have two ways for you to find just the remainder. Either we can form the long division and get the remainder, or we can just apply the remainder theorem, which in this case, we will get the same result, which is saying that our remainder is negative 4. So, we got the next example. Now, again, if they just ask you for the remainder, you can either do the long division or you can perform the remainder theorem. But in this case, we're going to do both so you can see that we get the same result. But if they just ask you for the remainder, you can just use the remainder theorem. Now, again, they're asking to do both so we can compare. Now, so let's, let's divide first. So let's do our long division. So numerator goes inside. Denominator goes outside. Okay. So that's our setup. 
Let's perform our long division. M times what gives me M squared. That will be M. Now that I have my number, I multiply N times M. That's M squared. Negative 8 times N. That's negative AM. When we do long division, we gotta change the sign. So we do that. So M squared cancels out. So now we have 8 minus 7n, so that's n minus 11. Now again, m times what gets me m, so that would be 1. So let's perform our multiplication. m times 1, that's m. Negative 8 times 1, that's negative 8. And in long divisions, once you multiply, you got to change the sign. So, negative 11 plus 8, so that's 3. So that says that our remainder is equal to 3. Okay. Now let's see. Can I get the same result if I use the remainder theorem? Well, let's see. If I want to use the remainder theorem, You first need to identify what is your a. Well, in this case, the denominator is m minus a. So that means that your a is 8. So your a is 8. So to find the remainder, we're going to look at the numerator, and we're going to evaluate it at a. So let's see that. So f of 8. We're going to see what our function is evaluated when 8. So let's look at the numerator. That's going to be 8 to the second. You're just evaluating the numerator. Now we perform our operation now. So let's see. Let's see what do we have here. 8 and 8. That's 64. Um, 7 times 8. That's 56, so minus, minus 56, minus 11. So now 64 minus 56 minus 11. It gives me negative 3. Oh, okay. I forgot negative 3 here. It's 8 minus 11. That gives me negative 3. So, notice that we have the same number here. Notice that we got the same remainder here. So, our remainder is negative 3. Okay, now what do we even care about remainders? It's because if you have a remainder of 0, Let's say you do your whole operation uh, and you have a remainder of zero. Then that means that the denominator, it's a factor of the numerator. In this case, n minus 8 is not a factor of m squared minus 7 and minus 11 because we got a remainder that is not zero. So that's why we care about remainders. I guess now we have two ways to do remainders. One of them is by performing the division. And the second one is by performing the remainder theorem. So now, this is our second example, or a third example. Again, let's perform our division. n squared plus 10n plus 18 divided by n plus 5. So again, we're going to perform our long division. So n times 1 gives you n squared. So that's n. So n times n n squared, 5 times n, that's 5n. Remember that in long division, we change our sign, so that's that's a minus. And that's a minus as well. So, cancel out, 10n minus 5n, so that's 5n. Bring down the 18. So now, n times 1 
you can give you 5n, so that's 5. So n times 5, that's 5n. 5 times 5, that's 25. And again, when we do long division, we gotta change our sign. So, negative, negative, cancel out. So we got that 18 minus 25. It gets me negative 7. So we see that the remainder is equal to negative 7. Let's see if we get the same remainder if we use the remainder theorem. Now, let's bring our equation here at the bottom. Now let's see if we get the same if we decide to use the remainder theorem. Now be careful that um, in our examples it was always x minus a number. So in this case it's x minus 2, so that was a is equal to 2. x minus 8, so that was because mm -hmm. a is equal to 8 now. So now what happens if your remainder is x plus a number? Well, notice that. Um, Let's do it here on the side. n plus 5. That is equal to n minus negative 5. So I can rewrite the expression here as... Oh, it's going to be a little messy here. n squared plus 10n plus 18 divided by n minus n5. So now that I rewrote it as a negative, because if you want to use the remainder theorem, it has to be minus a number. So that means that our a here is not 5, but negative 5. So you got to change that. So you got to be careful. If you have a plus, you got to rewrite it as minus minus. So that means our a is equal to negative 5. So let's see. Now that we know that a is equal to negative 5, let's use the remainder theorem. So f of negative 5. equals, let's substitute now, negative 5 to the second plus 10 minus 5 plus 18. So that gives us negative 5 to the second, that's 25. 10 to negative 5, that's 50 plus 18. So let's all this up. So now we have uh, 25 minus 50 plus 18, that gives me negative 7. So again, here, our remainder is negative 7. So now you have two ways for you to find the remainder. Either you can perform the long division, and you will get the, the last number at the end of the division. This is called your remainder. Or you can just use the remainder theorem. Just you need to identify your a, and then you plug it in. Now, for your entrance ticket, here you have two expressions. Now, here I'm just asking to find the remainder. You can either use the remainder theorem, or you can either use long division, but I'd rather you get familiar with the remainder theorem. So just find the remainder, doesn't matter which method you decide to choose.